In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use a website called PullEverywhere.com to create instant quick polls for your students to answer. And it's also great for presentations, for lectures, for any time you're speaking in front of a group. And I think of this as an excellent formative assessment tool. It's a great way to kind of test the waters to see how your presentation is coming across to the students or the participants and to find out what they're learning or not learning. So let's look at how you can sign up. If you go here to pulleverywhere.com and click on sign up, it takes you to a page where you can make a decision about are you going to sign up mostly as a participant or as a presenter. I'm going to go with presenter. In fact, participants don't really have to sign up at all. So go to sign up as a presenter and by default it's going to help you set up a free account. But let's click see all plans because this is pretty important to understand before you start using pulleverywhere.com. So here we have a list of some of their options. Now notice these are the business and nonprofit options and they basically include try it free. You get a temporary free account that you can use with basically 25 audience members at a time. So those are some options you can pay to get much better options here. Now if you're in higher education or if you teach kindergarten through 12th grade, there's some great options here that make it basically free for you to use PollEverywhere.com. The free account makes it so that you can use it with 40 audience members at a time. Now you can always reset that. You can clear out the participants. And so let's say you have a class of 35 students. You use Poll Everywhere with that group. And then the next period comes in, the next class period, and you can use that same poll again with 35 people as long as you clear it out. At least that's my understanding and that's how it's worked for me. Notice with the free account, you can't really choose your username, but you can use it in conjunction with PowerPoint. You can use it with some other options here that you have. But if you want a better plan for yourself, you could pay and get some really nice options as well. Okay, once you have decided on the option, go ahead and click sign up, put in your first name, last name, email, password. Okay, you can put in a phone number if you'd like and then create my pulleverywhere.com account. Give me a second and I'll sign into my account and I'll show you what you can do with this once you're signed up. Okay, so I'm signed into my account and you can see here I have a list of polls that I've created. Each of these is just one question and that question is ready to be asked whenever I need it to be asked. Let's look at how I created these. To create a poll, you just go up to the upper left, click Create, and you choose from one of these seven poll types. Let's look at each quickly. First, we have multiple choice. So I could go in and let's say in a Spanish class, I could create a poll. In this case, a multiple choice poll. One that says something like, which of these is the word for cat in Spanish. And then I can go in and put either text or an image. I'm gonna go ahead and just put text in this case. So give me a second to put in some answers and then I'll resume. Okay, so I've put in my answers and I'm gonna make this a little bigger so it's easier for you to see that. Now that I've got my question and some answers, and of course this is the correct answer, but now I'm ready to assign this activity to a group. Now this isn't a group of people. This is actually a group of questions. So let's say upcoming on Friday, I have a class that I'm preparing for and I would like to add this question to the list of questions for Friday. I could just click for Friday and it would assign it to that group. In this case, that's not really necessary. I'm just gonna leave it ungrouped. Now, before I move on, I need to tell you that I added additional options by clicking the plus sign, and then I typed in answers that the students could choose. You can also delete ones that you don't need. But one thing that I didn't do, you'll notice I did not put in the correct answer. I didn't mark this as the correct answer, even though it is. And I could reorder them just so you can see how to do that. I can reorder them. But there really isn't a way to mark this as the correct answer. The reason why is because this isn't really a right or wrong kind of thing. This is a way to pull your students, to pull an audience, but you're not gonna penalize them for wrong answers and things like that. Okay, so I'm done with that one. I'll click Create, and that poll is created and is ready to be experienced by my students. At least it's almost ready. You can see, here's my question, here are the possible answers, and then it says, when poll is active, respond by going to this address. Now, with some of the poll types, you don't even have to go to a specific address. 
you know, this address, this is one that you could go to if you have a smartphone, if you have an iPad or an Android tablet, or if you're on a laptop or a computer of any kind. So that link works great. But what if your students have cell phones that are not smartphones? Well, they could actually text this message to this phone number. And they do that once to join the activity. Once they've done that, they should be able to answer the questions right there on their phone, even if it's not a smartphone. But like I mentioned, it says when poll is active. To make it active, you just click this button here, it activates it, and now people can respond. So let's test this out. I'm gonna go up here to test, and this is what it will look like when people have gone to pollev.com forward slash and the rest of the address, or if they've texted this message to this address. Okay, this is what they'll see, and they can respond. Okay, let's say el perro, that's not correct, el pato. Now notice it doesn't let them pick two, but it is possible to go down and clear response, and then they can put in a different answer. So here's the correct answer. And so the beautiful thing about Poll Everywhere is you can ask your students a question and then they can just anonymously put in their answers and then you can look at the screen and see, okay, a lot of my students know the right answer and a lot don't. It's also great for questions that don't have a specific right or wrong answer, just opinion questions. So in a language arts class, which of these short stories have you enjoyed reading the most or did you learn the most from reading? And so you can get that poll instantly on the screen. Okay, now at this point, I've tested it. I could go here to present, and it's ready for people to answer this question. I also have ways to present it here. You can download it as a slide, and I'll show you the best way to do that toward the end of the presentation. But you can also share it with links and things like that. But I'll be honest, I think the very best way to share your polls is by adding them to Google Slides presentations. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Okay, but first, I need to jump back to the polls, and I wanna show you other kinds of polls that you can add. In addition to multiple choice polls, you can add word cloud polls, and these are great. So with this, you just put in a question, you create the poll, and then the students will be able to type in their answers and they're open-ended answers. So they could type in any word here. Hopefully your students are trustworthy enough that you know that they won't put in inappropriate content. But uh, whatever they put in here, it formulates a word cloud out of it. If you're not familiar with word clouds, uh, look it up. But basically, it's a way for you to see the most popular answers. The more popular the answer, the bigger it will be on the screen. And so you can generate an instant word cloud in front of your students with them putting in the content that will become the word cloud. You can also do Q&A, where you put in a question and the student answers will pop up on the screen, but not so much in a word cloud format. You can also do a rank order poll, and this is one of my favorites. You put in a question, you put in answers, and then the students just have to rank them. They'll reorder them on their device in order of whatever you say, from least to most, from favorite to least favorite, or vice versa, whatever. Maybe you have them rank them in chronological order. But anyway, it's a great fun activity for the students. They use their device to put the answers in the proper rank and then they submit it. Another favorite of mine is clickable image. You put in a question and then you pick an image and you can see that it comes with several images that are preloaded and ready to go. But also you can upload an image of your own choosing. So just as a quick example, I could ask the question, where is Washington State? Okay, and then I could click here to select this as the image that's gonna be a clickable image, and then I could click Create. And when the students see this question, they'll see the map as well, and then they'll be able to click on it. Now, if you want, you can click anywhere on the image to track how many clicks that region receives. Now, my understanding is that that's optional, but watch what I could do. I could click here on Washington State and just create a clickable area, basically. Not a clickable area, but an area that will be tracked for clicks. Okay, so it will track how many times that area is clicked. Now, maybe I'll put a second clickable area for people that got close, but not quite. Okay, and that's region two. Now, you can even name these regions. So this is correct answer. If you want, you can put that there. Or just region one, region two is probably a good way to go, okay? 
but you can name those regions if you want and then just click create. Okay, let's test this one out. So here, when I click test, notice it reminds me I have to activate it first. Now that it's activated, the students will be able to click to say, okay, that's Washington State. Okay, notice it's tracking how many people click there. But if they click somewhere else, it, it also tracks that also. That's really one of my favorite poll types. I think it's, it's a great one. You can also create a survey with several questions. And then finally, you can have open-ended questions. These are similar to word clouds, but they're not in the form of a cloud. Now, each time you create one of these polls, it's added to your list of polls here. You can see here's my most recently created poll questions. And then down here, I have a group. If you want to create a group, you can simply select a couple of your questions, click group, and it says new group, and then I can name that. This is for my Monday class. I save it. And notice that those practice responses that I gave it are counting as responses. And I'm limited. I'm limited to 40 responses per session. So I'm going to highlight those and then go up and choose clear. It's going to clear it out. It does archive what I have already, but now it's down to zero responses. And I'm ready for my class sizes of 38 students or 39 students. As long as it's under 40, I'll be good. There are other options up here that you should look into. You can lock questions, delete them, and so forth. But what I've shown you is pretty much what you need to know to get started creating polls that are usable and workable. But where this gets exciting for me personally is when I use it in conjunction with Google Slides. So let me sign into my Google account and then I'll show you how to use your polls in Google Slides. Okay, I'm signed into my account. I'll just go into Google Drive and I'll create a new Google Slides presentation. Maybe I'll select a theme to use. It'll apply that theme. And of course I could put in a title and so forth. But I'm just gonna go underneath my title slide and instead of creating a new slide here, I want to insert some of my Pull Everywhere questions. To do this though, I'm going to need to go to the Chrome App Store to add an extension that will work inside of Google Slides. So I'm going to just go to a new browser window. You probably don't need to do that. You could just open a new tab and do it. But for me, I'm going to do it this way. And here in the upper left, I see the app symbol. If you don't see it there, you should go to View. Always show bookmarks bar. Make sure that's checked. But I'm going to click on Apps, go to the Web Store. And here in the Google Chrome Web Store, I'm searching for an extension called Pull Everywhere. So I do that search and it finds something called Polling in Google Slides, Add to Chrome, Add Extension. And so now when I go back to Google Slides, and I'll go to Drive first, and so I've opened up Google Drive again and found the presentation. And so now notice when I click underneath my title slide, this is where I would normally put a new slide, because of this extension that I've added, I have an option here in the menu bar across the top that says Pull Everywhere. And I can click on that and insert a pull. I should probably sign in though. I'm going to log in to my Pull Everywhere account. So give me a second to do that and then I'll continue. Okay, so now when I go to Pull Everywhere, I can insert a pull and it loads up my recent pulls. Here are the ones I just created. I can check mark the one that I want to insert. I click insert pull and it's inserting this slide, this pull actually, into the slide so that it'll be ready for the students to answer. I can go underneath that one and I can go to pull everywhere and insert another pull. And this is just a great way to keep your students engaged and to do formative assessment as you're teaching. So it's not just a one-way communication, but with this Pull Everywhere tool, everyone is expected to answer and to respond along the way during your presentation. I love this idea of an interactive presentation with two-way communication. And Pull Everywhere makes that easy and convenient and realistic in the classroom. Now, of course, I could intersperse slides between these poll questions that help teach the students new things and, uh, you know, create a really great educational experience here. So now, when I present my Google Slides presentation, there's my title slide. I advance to the next slide, and it does take a second to refresh, 
But then it taps into Poll Everywhere and it brings up a live question that can be answered by the students. And on my cell phone, I've gone here and I'm going to put in the answer of El Gato. And you can see immediately, as soon as I said Gato, I pressed that button and you saw how quickly the answer was recorded. And once the students have put in all their answers, I can then advance to the next slide. It'll refresh and bring up the content there that is also clickable. Now the nice thing is the students that already answered the first question, they're automatically ready to answer the second question. So they don't have to keep going to pullev.com in order to answer the next question. So I love Poll Everywhere. I think it's a great presenter tool, teacher tool. It's excellent for anyone presenting for an audience. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy using Poll Everywhere. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.